I was wondering if you could talk about producing this film and the difficulties a film of this sort with this type of budget has nowadays as far as getting on screen. It's tricky um, making dramas these days. Um, it's, it's, it's tough to you know, um, get the studios to take them on. There's, there's so many other things they can make that make them more money. But uh, I'm incredibly grateful to, to Braun uh, and Lionsgate. Braun financed the film after it had fallen out, our financing had fallen out uh, right before we started shooting. And um, Aaron Gilbert at Braun uh, just saw it as something really important. It's almost like he, he acknowledged that it was a much greater risk than usual, but he just said, I'll cash flow it and maybe we'll find another studio, hopefully we'll find it. Within 72 hours, Lionsgate jumped in too. Both of them took a, a huge chance. I credit my co-producer, Charlize Theron, for helping pull it back together. We had such a great script, an incredible cast, all in place to shoot, and two weeks before we started shooting, it all fell apart. And she just said to her reps and to anyone she could get a hold of, we can't let this stop. This has got way too much good going for it. And I joined in and we pitched it to a bunch of other places. I, I've read a lot about this film, the making of this film, and the research, the painstaking research that you've gone through. Can you tell mm -hmm. me a little bit about how much input or collaboration even that you had with Megan Kelly, if any? So Megan's not involved in the film at all. She wasn't involved in it. And um, we had to kind of rely on the reporting of uh, of other people to tell the story. She wrote about this episode in her book, um, um, but we, ha you know, Gabe Sherman, Sarah Ellison also reported on it. A number of other people did too. So we we tried to talk to uh, as many people as we could who were who were involved at Fox at this time. We promised all of them we wouldn't reveal who we spoke to. And so unless they've come out in public and said that they talked to us, like Allison Camerata. Uh, Rudy Bakhtiar, who portrayed the film, we've just um, just kind of protecting the sources. The courage it took to stand up against Roger Ailes, the most powerful guy in media, you know, um, to, to they some of these other women also um, made a brave choice to come and talk to us. Right. Very good. Thank you. The structure of the film, uh, in what, the breaking of the fourth wall, um, was that your decision? Uh, and how do you see that as a technique as far as telling the story, as far as the immediacy of it is concerned? So Charles Randolph wrote The Big Short with Adam McKay and, and um, had utilized a, a lot of that kind of breaking the fourth mm -hmm. wall. We've done a little bit of it in Trumbo and, and uh, you know, but I hadn't gone that far in terms of sort of saying to the audience, this is a construct. We're, we're going to tell a story that's based for sure in reality and it's completely inspired by real events and real people. But we're, we're also talking to you and asking you to participate in this as, a, as an interpretation of it, not a, not a recreation, not a documentary, not, a, not something that is historical. It's a two hour story about a year long thing with a few characters cover, portraying, you know, so representing hundreds of characters. And I really admired the way the big short was told when we got into this, there, in the script, there was even more of that kind of uh, stylistic um, breaking of the fourth wall and, and other stylistic um, techniques. And the performances were so strong, we found through the course of it that we needed less, <laughs> less of that than we had originally planned. And Charles Randolph was with us the entire time, so he was making the adjustments in the script as we watched these great actors step in. and inhabit these roles and he he was just as eager as I was to have it be authentic you know first and foremost just get the story right if we if there's time for other more entertaining elements to help say to people look this will be interesting and even entertaining from time to time that's great but first and foremost honor the story right this kind of piggybacks off what Chuck just asked you. There's a scene with Abby Huntsman, I think is the woman's name, in the yep. restaurant where she is thinking that she's being promoted for her great work, yep. when in actuality there are ulterior motives of sure. her male boss who's yeah. offering this. We get inside of her mind, her thoughts, mm -hmm. and I can't think of many people, many women who haven't had this type of a situation. Tell me yeah. about um, bringing that aspect. I don't know if you call that breaking the fourth wall yeah. or what you might call it. So that's Rudy Bakhtiar, is that, is that woman. Um, and she, 
went through this incredible experience. She was a rising star. She was at CNN. Then she goes to Fox. She gets a three-year contract. She's seen as the future Christiane Amanpour. She's sent into, she's Persian herself. She goes into um, battle zones and does great reporting. Six months into her tenure at Fox, a guy hits on her in a bar, and she doesn't even complain. Her agent complains on her behalf and she's fired and it's the end of her career and she sees it coming and she we she has now come out and said in public that she spoke to us and we did get to talk to her and she wow. told us what she was thinking as she realized even as this guy was hitting on her and she was tap dancing around to try to yeah. keep his ego from exploding you know because she was rejecting him she rejected him and he contributed to her downfall. I mean, she got fired. She never works in broadcasting. I mean, it was such an excruciating story. And we did think that somehow um, letting us in on her thoughts as it's as it going would help, especially men, figure out what this might feel like in mm -hmm. the middle of this kind. Because we just don't know. You know, we can hear the stories, and some of us are trying really hard to be sensitive about it, and I, I put myself in that category, but I didn't know. I wouldn't have been able to figure that out. And, and Charles's connection to her, her, we used a lot of her actual dialogue from an article she had contributed to. Um, it just made it feel authentic from, from early on in the film that, that uh, okay, we're gonna really honor what these women go through. Thank you, I appreciated that scene. Thank you very much. I'm gonna assume no one at Fox has seen the film yet. Uh, and uh, what we are you anticipating know. as far as the response from them? I'm sure we could predict it, but uh, I guess there is no good pub pub bad publicity <laughs> where these types of things are concerned. I don't know how they'll respond. I imagine to some extent they, they'll be um, open to it because they are trying to reform, you know, or at least trying to be seen as reforming in this particular regard and how safe women feel working for them at Fox. But I, it does reveal that there was a culture under Roger Ailes that was very much about power and um, demanding loyalty, even if it some, in some dark situations involved showing loyalty through sexual favors. Like uh, That was his logic for what he expected from these women. And he expected from everybody to, uh, be, to allow him to bully them and still keep working for him. I think once you realize that that kind of toxic male-centered ego cult of personality thing is revealed to be Roger's thing, but that, that Roger and Fox are an yeah. overlapped thing through that whole period, then I, I suppose that kind of spirit of Roger can't, hasn't been exercised out of the <laughs> entire uh, network. So I imagine they'll, they won't necessarily like it, but I, I would hope that it, it, there's a a universal thing we could all agree on that women should be safe at work and it doesn't matter what <laughs> political bent you know uh, you come from or what network you work at and and we say this to ourselves in Hollywood too we have to figure this out you know it, women should be safe at work and I feels like to come out and attack that idea which is really the central premise of the mm -hmm. story would be risky <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, to and, and especially for them because they've you know they've definitely um, had issues, you know. Um, but again, they're not alone. It's, it's no. a pattern that happens in industries on the left, on the right, uh, and everywhere in between. It is. Um, quick question, although it might be a little bit too elaborate, the makeup with um, <laughs> Charlize and with mm -hmm. John Lithgow, he, they both became their characters. Can yeah. you just give us a little insight into that? So um, Kazuhiro uh, Suji did the makeup, and he's an incredible artist. He's a sculptor by trade. Ah. He, we keep having to hire him back out of retirement because <laughs> after every film he retires, and I'm just going to focus on sculpting. And then, w especially because he met the actors and and w was so in awe of all three women, but John too, he said, "All right, I'll come back," and, <laughs> and uh, he did. And you know, we, we went through a kind of trial and error. It's always a question of how close do you want to get? Do you want to really be a perfect match or do you, you know, and can somebody match so perfectly? The, the transition for Charlize was so thorough that people often think we were still in archival right. footage mode mm -hmm. at the beginning and they were like, oh my God, that's yeah. Charlize Theron in there. And you don't really, it's almost such a transformation. 
I think audiences like that for for reasons I'm not entirely sure about because it's not like there's you, you know you, you you don't want it to be a caricature and you don't you don't I don't really I like sort of losing myself in the performance but when you hit both that gr- amazing performance and a good match w- people notice and oh, yeah. they seem to sort of celebrate that you know and I I'm hats off to my great cast because they all wanted to go as far as they could really? to take you back in that time machine and ask you to empathize with what they were what they were up against or what they were perpetrating if they were right. Roger if you were Roger Ailes. Very good. Thank very you. Much. Thank you. Thank very you very much, much for having me. I really appreciate it.